Hey guys, welcome to my commercial service calculation for a restaurant. We're going to go over the optional method and this is going to be part of my crash course series because we're going to go through it fairly quickly. And this is going to be under the 2020 NEC, but don't worry because this will be good for most previous cycles of the code because they don't really change article 220 very often. And when they do, they don't change it by much, but still just uh, pay attention to any discrepancies if you're on a different code cycle than 2020. If you find that you need a little bit more depth in understanding this, please visit my deep dive series. I have a commercial calculation deep dive that I go through and I take the time to go through every detail and give you every code reference, every article, every little step to get all your information in that course. So please visit the deep dive if you need more info than what's on this video. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to 220.88 and then we're gonna find new restaurants. This is where we go for the optional method for calculating a restaurant. It tells us that the calculation of a service or feeder load where the feeder serves a total load for a new restaurant shall be permitted in accordance with table 220.88 in lieu of part three of this article. All right, so what it's telling us is we're not gonna use part three, and part three, remember, is where we would go for our demand factors, mainly speaking, for feeders and services. But in this case, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna just stick with part two, which are branch circuits. So we're just gonna be adding up all of our branch circuits. And then once we get them all added up, we're gonna apply our total to table 220.88 with the demand factor we find there. So I've created this table over here to do exactly that. We're just gonna go through, we're gonna find out what all of our loads are, and we're just gonna add them up. And once we get to the end, we'll get a total branch circuit load, which is our connected load. And then we're gonna take that number and apply it to table 220.88. And then we'll come up with our total billing VA. All right, so before we leave this, we're gonna go over a couple of things here. It says the overload protection of the service conductor shall be in accordance with 230.90 and 240.4. That doesn't apply to us because we're not dealing with overload but that's something to note there. Also, it says feeder conductors shall not be required to be of greater ampacity than the service conductors. That seems pretty obvious. And again, it doesn't apply to us because we're just dealing with service conductors here. Lastly, it says service or feeder conductors whose calculated load is determined by this optional calculation shall be permitted to have the neutral load determined by 220.61. Again, that's very standard. Most calculations allow their neutral load to be determined by 220.61. Not all, but most do. All right, so what we're gonna do is take an example of a restaurant and we're gonna go through it step by step and plug in our information and see how this really works. And here is our example. We have a restaurant, it's 7,200 square feet, and we have all of our individual loads listed here. And I won't read through this because we're just gonna go on and see on the next page that we have these values in front of us the whole way through. And here we are over here with our example and all of our values. First step, we're gonna start with the square footage of the building. And it tells us we have 7,200 square feet. So we're just gonna plug in 7,200 right there. After that, we're gonna find out what our multiplier is. And we go to table 220.12 for that. 220.12 is general lighting loads for non-dwelling occupancy. We're gonna go down the list here and find ours. And we happen to have one that specifically says restaurant. We're gonna follow that across and we're gonna find out we have 1.5 VA per square foot as a multiplier. So we'll plug in 1.5 here, multiply 7,200 by 1.5 and we get 10,800 VA for our minimum lighting load. Okay, now that we have our minimum lighting load, we can go on to our other loads. And I've broken this up a little bit because some of these loads have some specific requirements for their calculating. And you'll see as we go along how this will make sense. But the first part, we're gonna take A, B, D, and E. And these are gonna be any specific loads, generally, that just for the most part take their full nameplate value with the exception of the track lighting and ceiling fans, which those will have an extra 25% added because they are continuous loads. Both of those are likely to be running for three hours or longer at a given time. So in this section, particularly under A, it's gonna be all specific loads that are not called out in F through L. Now F through L have specific requirements and stipulations, so we're gonna treat those individually in just a minute. Okay, first of all, let's go over our track lighting. We've got 2,400 watts of track lighting, so we have 2,400 watts times 125% is 3,000. We have six 144 watt ceiling fans, so again, times 125% is 1080. 
Then we have three exhaust fans. We have an air conditioning unit, hood fan, two hand dryers. And then we have all our kitchen equipment. We have a bunch of equipment here. We're just going to add it all up. Take name plates of everything, add it all up. We get 67,430 VA. And that'll be the last that we have in our example for this section. Next, we're going to go to sign and outline lighting. And we don't show anything in our example that says we have a sign or any outline lighting, but in 600.5A, it tells us that a minimum of one circuit is required. And then in 220.14F here, it tells us that that circuit must be a minimum of 1200 watts times 125%. That gives us 1500 VA. Now, remember that this requirement, this minimum of one requirement is per door of access to the building by the public for customers or whatnot. If you have two doors of public access, then you have two circuits required. So just remember that. All right. So next we're going to show window lighting. We have 70 feet of show window. So we take 70 feet times 200 VA per linear foot. And that gives us 14,000 VA times 125% because it's continuous, 17,500 VA. Okay, now we add all these numbers here that I have in bold, add them all together. We get 123,810 VA. We're gonna slide that subtotal right up here to the top of this column, and then we're gonna continue on with our other loads. And we're gonna go to H, fixed multi-outlet assemblies. We don't have any in our example. We move on to I, which is receptacle outlets. We have 3,600 VA receptacle load, so 3,600 right there. Other outlets, we don't have any. Now we're going to go to C, and C is out of order here. And I did this because it's easier to wait until you have all your loads established before you go back through and look for your largest motor. So in the whole building, we're going to take our largest motor load and add an extra 25% to that. Our largest motor is our air conditioner. 16,000, so we're going to take a quarter of that, 4,000, we're going to put that right there. Once we have that, we can add all of our bold numbers here together, and we come up with 131,410 VA, and that is our total branch circuit load, which is also called our connected load. Okay, now if you remember back at the beginning when we went over 220.88, it told us that what we were going to do here for this calculation, optional method, we are going to add up all our branch circuits, get a connected load total, and then we're going to take a demand factor from table 220.88, and that's what we're doing now. So we have our connected load. We're going to go to table 220.88, and that tells us this is optional method, permitted load calculations for service and feeder conductors for new restaurants. All right, so what we're going to do here is take our total connected load and we're going to find out which row here it fits into. In our case, 131,000 fits into the 0 to 200,000 VA row. Now, if we had a 400,000, we'd be in the third row, and that would be our row that we stayed in. So with 131,000 VA, we're going to be in row 1. We're going to go across here, and we have two options here. We have all-electric restaurant, and we have not all-electric restaurant. Well, in our case, it says we have gas heating and grills. So we definitely do not have an all electric restaurant. So here is our column over here. So at 131,000 VA, our demand factor is 100%. So we get no break whatsoever because it's a pretty small restaurant. So we got to take everything at 100%. Now, if we had had an all electric restaurant, we would have been taking this at 80%. We take 80% of our number and that would be our total building VA. But in this case, we don't. So 131,410 is our number. We just slide that down to total building VA. Now, again, if we had a 400,000, say, load, then we'd be on this third line. And what we would do then is we would take the amount over 325. So that'd be 75,000. And then we take 45% of that 75,000 and then add 262,500 to that number. And that would be the number we would use as our total building VA. So I just want to let you know in case you come up here and say, hey, we didn't talk about this. How does this work? Because this can be a little bit confusing, but just remember this is like a math problem. 45% of the amount over 325 and then plus 262.5 KVA. All right, one more thing. We want to look at this note down here. 
It says add all electrical loads, including both heating and cooling loads. Now, that's a little different from other calculations. A lot of times we take the larger of the two when dealing with heating and cooling, but in this case, we are taking all of it. So we're taking all electrical loads, including both heating and cooling loads, to calculate the total connected load. Then select the one demand factor that applies from the table, then multiply the total connected load by this single demand factor. So that tells us right there that we are taking one demand factor that we're selecting here. We're not adding these together. These do not stack like some other tables do in the code. So this is just reassurance that we're doing this the right way. Okay, once you have that number, 131,410, we look over here, we find out that our voltage is 208 volt, three phase. So we divide 131,410 by the product of 208 times the square root of three, and that gives us 365 amps, and that is our service total. Okay, and here's one last shot of the whole problem with all the information filled in. And then here what I've done is given you a non-colorized template, an empty worksheet, so you can take a screenshot of this, you can print it out, use it as a practice guide, as a, an actual worksheet for a job, or maybe as a study guide. Whatever you want to do with it, it's yours. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you thought this was helpful to you, please give me a like and also subscribe to my channel. That'll help push this out to more people that may be looking for some help as well. You can also find a lot of other videos I've got posted on my channel. And let me know what else you might like to see a video of and I'll see if I can make that happen. All right, well, guys, don't forget, stay free.